Hello. Um, I have today with me the Acer Chromebook Tab 10. So we're going to unbox it, have a look at it, have a look at the specs, uh, the, reason that they, the reason that they made this tablet, and we're going to try it out, see how it runs. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So comes in a nice blue box. Um, plain, easy box. So we can see here that it is the Acer Chromebook Tab 10. I'll just adjust the focus a little bit here so you can see, so you can see better. So it runs Google Chrome operating system. It has an OP1 processor, that's so an ARM processor. Uh, 9.7 inch IPS multi-touch LCD, uh, 4 gigs of RAM, uh, 32 gigs of storage, 802.11ac Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth, as well as has two cameras, a uh, 2 megapixel camera plus a 5 megapixel camera. I'm not sure which one is the front and which one's the back. We'll see, and it's got a two cell lithium polymer battery. So you can see the manufacturer date is 2018. This is a new unit, I think it just came out a couple weeks ago. So we'll see. So I'm sorry I've already uh, broken the seal, or rather, someone else has already broken the seal, but the device inside is still new. So let's flip it over and get started. So if we open the box. And inside the box, start. We've got a little setup guide. Um, yeah, I'm not really gonna look at this. We got a setup guide. I'll put that aside. We have also a little some kind of regulations notice. Nice little paper though. And here we have the tablet itself. Yeah, nice plastic. So I'll try to get this out without making too much noise. Okay, so here is the tablet. I'll put that aside for now and we'll look at what else we've got in the box. So, underneath the tablet, we have this separator thing. We'll remove this. inside the box. Not much else to see. So we have the wall power cord, um, US power cord. Fairly thick one, I'm surprised. Put that aside. And then we have the actual power brick. So let's remove this from the plastic. You know what? I'll put this box out of the way. The box is just getting in the way. And we've got some kind of FCC card right here. We'll just put this uh, box off to the side now. So we have the power brick. It is a USB C power brick. So you can see that here. So as all Chromebooks actually need to. Uh, required to have a USB-C power supply now. It's uh, rated for 5 volts 3 amps, um, uh, 9 volts 3 amps, 15 volts 3 amps, and 20 volts 2.24 amps for 45 watts. 
So the uh, it's nicely held together with some Velcro. And here we go. So let's get back to the main attraction, which is the tablet itself. So we've got the tablet here. We'll pull it out of its plastic. And here it is. Very shiny. You can see a reflection of me there and my messy, messy mic setup. Um, so, nice big size screen. The back is a sort of, it's a plastic with a nice line texture on it here. I don't know if you can see that. It's got a nice texture on it. It's got the chrome logo on the back. A little camera right here. Um, on the bottom side, which you can see here, we've got the USB charging port. My USB-C charging port. What I guess is the speakers right here, and uh, some FCC labels and whatnot. On this side here, we have the um, I think is the micro SD card slot, the volume buttons. They feel pretty okay. So the power button. And right here, this little slot in here, this little notch here, this is actually a stylus. So you can pull this out. We have a little stylus. This is actually a Wacom uh, stylus. So it's similar to what I believe the styluses that came in earlier Windows tablet PCs, you know, from the uh, mid-2000s or so. So it's a good uh, stylus. It's a passive stylus. It doesn't require um, a battery, unlike the ones in the new Surface. So it's nice. It's a bit small, but it's nice that it slots away into the device because for some reason, like, I have the um, HP Elite X2 uh, tablet, which is like the surface, but the pen on it doesn't slot into the tablet. So I've almost lost it on a few occasions. And, um, yeah, um, and it's actually, the tip's actually gotten damaged. So it's nice that this, this one actually slots in. So this way you won't lose it. Alright, so let's get rid of this plastic. Okay, so we got the tablet here. Alright, and let's try powering it on. Hopefully the battery is charged. And of course the battery is not charged, so let's pull out that charger and get it charged up.
So we got that plugged in now. And there it goes. So we've got the nice chrome boot screen there. And you can see just how quickly this boots. So here's the welcome screen. Uh, I'm going to see if we can select English Canada because I am here in Canada. So, um, and we'll continue on with the setup process. So, let's go. So I am going to connect to my Wi-Fi network, set the terms, and there it goes, checking for updates. It's going to download the system update. So one thing that's really nice with Chrome OS is that the updates are automatic, just like Windows or whatever other OS you use, but the updates actually apply really quickly. So right now, uh, since this is the first boot, um, the updates are applying, you know, in the foreground. But in normal use of Chrome OS, if you've never used a Chromebook, what happens is the updates actually download in the background. And then you just get a little prompt in the corner down here um, that tells you it's time to restart your device. And uh, sorry, I'm just playing with the focus a little bit here. So when you update it, just it just tells you that um, time to update the device and you reboot and your device is up to date and it takes a few seconds to reboot so let's just appreciate a bit more of this the texture on the back of this device I think it makes some cool sounds So the tablet has finished updating and has restarted. So we'll just wait for it to uh, connect back to my Wi-Fi network, recheck for updates again, which there should be none now since it's already updated. And um, we'll follow the rest of the setup process. All right, so I'm going to sign in to the uh, Chromebook. All right, so we're signed in. So the way, uh, obviously, a Chromebook works, it's all Google stuff. So by default, it will sync all your Google data, uh, bookmarks, history, passwords, other settings. They'll sync to your Google account. And it will also, uh, Google will also track all your browsing history and whatnot. Um, yeah, so we'll accept that since we're just going to dive in with Google. Um, I'm going to let it back to Google Drive, and this is for Google Play, actually. So what happens is um, Chrome OS uh, traditionally just ran the Chrome browser, but um, they've introduced a new feature where it can now actually run Android apps. Hence why now they can release a Chrome OS tablet, because um, while there aren't really many tablet optimized websites, there are some uh, tablet optimized Android apps. So I'm going to accept the Google Play Terms and Services, and here we are. So it's going to tell me, there you go, um, and welcome to your Chrome family. It's no ordering your computer. So you can tell this device is pretty new because in the pictures, there are only Chromebooks, which are in the laptop form factor and not a nice new Chrome tablet like we have here. So I'm going to close this and we're just going to go over uh, sort of the features of the device. Um, so you can see that uh, Chrome OS, so if you're not familiar with the Chrome OS, um, usually in the corner here 
is your sort of launcher start menu. So on a, on a regular Chromebook, usually it pops up more like a Windows start menu in the left corner. And I think in a regular Chromebook, you also don't have that back button because obviously you would just use the keyboard or mouse. Um, so I guess the back button. So it kind of is the, the two buttons from Android back and home. And I guess here on the right, you have the multitasking button so um, they made the controls for Chrome OS very similar to uh, Android. So you can see that it's syncing my uh, Chrome settings, um, my AdBlock extension. And so if we hit the multitasking, we get the multitasking view from Chrome OS, which is pretty cool. And um, yeah, I have to say the screen looks really nice. Um, it's very bright. Um, glass is very reflective as glass does so uh, but that's that's cool um, yeah and I think we've got the full uh, desktop experience so I'm gonna just open up some websites here let's go into YouTube and uh, yeah it loads the full desktop version of YouTube um, complete with ads and the full desktop version of YouTube, which is pretty cool. Um, we can also, let's try a website, let's try Twitch. Also loads the full desktop version of Twitch, which is pretty cool. Um, can I move that audio before it starts playing? But yeah, look at that, full desktop website on a tablet. Um, you know, we're not hitting the mobile sites for anything, so which is, which is kind of interesting. Um, very smooth scrolling. And, um, yeah, I guess that's pretty much what we got for the interface. Uh, as we saw the touch keyboard, touch keyboard looks a lot like, um, Gboard if you use Android. So, uh, Google's keyboard which makes sense because this is also a Google device. It's a little bit different. There's a little menu button down here. Other than that, it looks very much like the uh, usual Google material design. Um, yeah. So what else should we look at? Um, I guess let's go over uh, some specs. Um, so this tablet has, uh, I think we mentioned already, but it, already ha it has an ARM processor running at 2 GHz, um, 4 GB of LPDDR3 RAM. It has 32 GB of flash storage, so you can actually, there's actually a uh, file browser on here. So we can see our files. Uh, it doesn't actually tell me how much, there we go, so there's 22.5 GB available, I don't know if you can see that. So that has 32 gigabytes total, so some of it obviously is used for the OS or caching or things like that. Um, 9.7 inch, 2048 by 1536 pixel screen, um, which is using IPS technology, so it's got great viewing angles. Um, and this is actually the same resolution and same screen size as the iPad mini retina display the iPad mini, or the full iPad, I don't remember. Anyways, it's a, it's a 2048 by 1536 uh, resolution panel, which is nice. Um, 11, 11AC wireless, it's connected to my 11AC access point. Actually, let's test the speeds. So I've got a 500 megabit internet connection, and let's see what it looks like. If I can get that full speed over wireless. Whoops. We're not quite getting the full speed over wireless, so um, still decent speed, 200 and something megabits, which is nice. Um, yeah. Pretty good. Mind you, I'm in the next room over from my uh, wireless access point, so I'm not right beside it, so it could be a signal issue or interference or something like that. But it's good to know that I can get at least 200 megabits um, without any optimization at all. Um, 
All right. So, as you can see, it thinks that I'm on a desktop here, which is kind of, which is cool. It really thinks that I'm on a desktop uh, because it is a desktop web browser. Okay. So the last software thing I want to go over is um, the Google Play Store. So we'll open up the Google Play Store here. We'll accept the terms, and uh, you can see we've got full access to the Google Play Store. I can install whatever apps I want. Um, I can install YouTube, CBC, Amazon Video. I can install anything I want. I can just gonna install VLC right here. Works just like on an Android tablet. Um, what else should we try? Should we try something heavy? Should we try, you know what? Oh, there's VLC, it opened. I right, don't want VLC right now, so it works just like a real Android device. Uh, let me install Firefox, you know, just because it's a Chromebook, but we're going to run Firefox on it because we're cool like that. Um, yeah, all right, Firefox is installed, so there we go. So, all right, so we're running Firefox for Android on a Chrome tablet, which is pretty cool. Just go over the multitasking. I guess close uh, close that app. All right, let's try and install a game. So let's go. I don't really play games on mobile, but um, let me go to an old classic. Let's just install Angry Birds. Uh, if I could type Angry Birds and. Um, Let's just install the classic version. Turn the volume down to keep everything quiet. Better like this time. There you go. Let's get a little piggy. There you go. So uh, games work. Um, everything works. Open up a Google Doc. Google Doc. Once again, we get the uh, desktop version of Google Docs. I'm just curious how optimized. Um, we got the desktop version of Google Docs here. Uh, I'm just curious as to how optimized this is for tablets. So, yeah, if I double tap on there, it brings up the keyboard. Hello, I'm typing on a touch keyboard on the Chromebook. I'm not sure. Oh, look at that. It's got actually got it actually got gesture 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 typing. Pretty cool. Um, I will say actually right now the device is getting a little bit hot in the back here. Um, but other than that, it seems pretty cool. So I'll have to use this a bit more um, to really tell how good it is. But uh, yeah, I'll give it a try. So you might ask, I guess, why, you know, who wants to buy this? Like, what's the point of creating a tablet that runs Chrome OS? Um, so really, um, the reason for this because it's basically just a, you know, heavier iPad um, that runs an operating system that isn't really known for mobile. Uh, it's known for, you know, little laptops. Um, so why do we want a Chrome OS tablet? Uh, the reason for that, really, number one, is schools. So um, schools really love Chromebooks. Uh, because they're cheap, um, 
They're available for many different vendors. They're pretty simple to use, so, you know, a student, teacher, or whoever can just kind of pick it up. And if they know how to use Chrome, they know how to use a Chromebook. Um, and the big thing for IT, why the IT of school boards loves Chromebooks, is because they are easy to manage. Um, very easy to manage, com especially compared to a Mac OS or an iPad or an Android tablet or even Windows PCs. Um, because everything is done through the Google uh, G Suite Management Console. Uh, so it's one console, you pay a fee once when you buy the device, and um, you are able to manage uh, the device at pretty much everything, uh, software updates, uh, push down Chrome extensions, change the home page, um, set who's allowed to log in, put into kiosk mode, all this from just Google's console. So I really think that um, a device like this will be a big hit with schools, but we'll see this September. Uh, so I'm assuming a lot of schools have bought them over the summer. Um, so we'll see if they actually end up working well. Um, I don't know if any other manufacturers are coming out with Chrome tablets, but uh, yeah, it looks like Acer is first to market with this. Um, you know, for the larger consumer space, I don't really see this, you know, displacing the iPad or anything. Um, the iPad's really the king of tablets. But for me, like, as a sort of tech geek, um, I really like that we have a, you know, relatively small portable tablet um, with a good quality screen uh, that can browse the full desktop web. Um, you know, with desktop web, by desktop web, I mean, you know, the full desktop interface. It's got Flash Player. Yeah, Flash should go away or whatever, but, you know, if I want to watch Homestar Runner uh, on my tablet, you know, just as it was in 2005, I can do it with this. I can't really do that on an Android and iOS device. Um, but it also provides the speed and ease of use of a, you know, a normal Android or iOS tablet. Um, you know, I know, yeah, we can say before we have had, you know, tablets that run full desktop websites, you know, with Windows 8. Um, but, you know, sorry, Windows 8 or Surface fans, you know, Windows just really isn't a good mobile OS. Um, and I think this combination of Chrome OS, because Chrome updates really quickly, and it runs Android apps, so it's got a fairly rich library of apps. Um, I personally think it's a good device, and I'm excited to see where it goes next. Will these replace Android tablets? Who knows? Um... Will they be success in schools? Will they be a success with the regular consumer? We'll see. So I hope you enjoyed uh, watching this sort of unboxing, mini review, ASMR. I don't really know what I'm doing. Um, but uh, let me know what you think of the Chromebook tab. Um, and, uh, you know, maybe also let me think, let me know what you think about just this video format, any tips, any whatnot. So, um, thank you for watching, and, uh, maybe we'll see you next time.